Well, thank you so much, boys and girls, for taking part in our nativity. I hope you enjoyed taking part in the Christmas story and perhaps learning a bit more about what happened uh, at that time. Just before we, we finish, I would like to take a few moments just to reflect on what we have seen and heard. A bit like Mary uh, there as she pondered everything and took it all in. Because the nativity story is an invitation to us. It's an invitation to look for God in our own lives. I wonder how you feel about Christmas. I know many of the children and maybe a few of the adults are quite excited. It's a wonderful time of excitement and joy but we might not all feel that way. Maybe some of us feel as though, do you know what, I've done enough Christmases. It's the same thing every year, we say. The same songs, the same presents, the same stresses. I'll do it for the kids, but I'm kind of over it. It's just another day. Or maybe we positively dislike Christmas. All the materialism, all the loss of meaning. Or perhaps you might even hate Christmas. Maybe it reminds you of a hard, difficult time in your life. Maybe it reminds you of what has been lost. However you feel about Christmas, however ordinary a day it has become for you, do let me take a moment to encourage you to take another look and see the miraculous in the ordinariness of Christmas. Because Christmas is a great reminder for us to look for God in our own lives. In so many ways, the nativity story is an ordinary story. It's a story about a young mother carrying a child. It's about a pregnancy that isn't easy and a baby that is born in less than ideal circumstances. Mary giving birth in the grubbiness of a stable, a cave. It's about a man who's uh, called far from home to register in Bethlehem just so the government can tax him properly. It's about a man who, quite frankly, is slightly panicky as his partner goes into labour. The nativity story is so ordinary and down to earth, it could, it could be a plot line in EastEnders or, or a sitcom. And yet, it is through this very ordinary story that God reveals himself. Because in the ordinariness of the nativity, we also see the miraculous, if we look for it. Angels appear from heaven. There's a heavenly host singing, proclaiming the message that God has come in the flesh. And yet, who do they come to? Not the wealthy in the palaces, not the rich and the famous, but to the poor in the fields, to the shepherds. Not only are there angels, but there's a miraculous conception. The birth of God himself made flesh. Mary carries Jesus, God, in her body. God, the one who created everything, makes himself small. God joins us, joins humanity. In the nativity story, the miraculous happens in the midst of the ordinary. And so the Christmas story is a reminder for us to seek the divine in the ordinariness of our own lives. To seek the presence of God even in the seemingly dull and mundane. Because we might think, well, I've never seen angels. Nothing miraculous or interesting like that has ever happened to me. And we might think, you know, I am so ordinary, how could my life ever have any sort of meaning? But the truth is, our lives are full of little glimpses of God, if we'll just open our eyes to see them. You see, as we were thinking this morning, actually, we were created by God to be with God. And even though we may have run far away from him, there is part of us that still longs for him. 
There is part of us that still feels empty without him. And there is part of us that comes alive when we experience something of him. When we experience genuine love, it warms our hearts. When we experience true generosity, it stops us in our tracks. It moves us to gratitude and to joy. If you are a parent, you will know that overwhelming swell in your heart when you first held your baby. Oh, you say, sure, billions of people have done the same before you. It's perfectly ordinary. But you know in that moment your life has changed. In that very ordinary thing, you are experiencing something powerful that pulls at you. You are experiencing life. You are experiencing love. You are experiencing something of the divine life breaking through to you. You perhaps know what it's like to cry out to God in desperation. You are ill. You are in trouble. You're facing something terrible. And you call out, God, I'm not even sure you're there. But if you are, help me. And then maybe you find that the sickness has gone. The trouble has passed and you were helped. You're experiencing something of the divine life breaking through this Christmas as we gather with loved ones and we exchange gifts and show love and enjoy good food and celebrate the joy we experience is a good thing and therefore it is from God we experience something of God in this some might say well you know at Christmas when you get together with family and you have a nice time you know it's nothing more it's nothing more than Dopamine being released in the brain, triggered by some imprinted behaviour. For you know better. We know that we are more than chemistry. We know that it's love. And God is love. God is trying to break into your life. That's why he came that first Christmas. He wants to know you and be known by you. He wants to share his life with you. Which is why he was born as a human that first Christmas. For many in Bethlehem that night, they did not see the angels. They didn't hear the heavenly chorus. They didn't see the child in the manger, God in the flesh. For many, it was just another night. But for those who had eyes to see, their lives were changed. The Christmas story is a reminder to us that no matter how ordinary we, we may know we are, we are to believe that God can transform us. He can make saints out of ordinary people like you and I. He can change us. He can fill us with his life. If we only have eyes to see the divine in the ordinary. If we only have hearts that seek after God. So this Christmas, rejoice. Jesus is born to bring peace. He has come to save us, you and I. In the orderliness of our lives, it is there that we find God. It is there that he comes to us. It is there that he meets with us. When you experience something of God this Christmas, don't shut him down. Don't ignore him. Don't tell him to be quiet. But believe. Believe that there is something more than what your eyes see. Look for it and seek him out. God is calling out to you and you can receive his life and help this Christmas.